Hey there, it's Nuno Silva and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to walk you through the process of creating that nice time-lapse animation you just saw at the beginning of the video. This animation is a great way to showcase different times of day and different weather conditions for architectural visualizations. So without further ado, let's get started. Since we are going to create an animation, first thing we need to do is to go here to the bottom, we see this movie icon, we click and let's create an animation by clicking on one of these empty slots here on the bottom and you'll see this icon that says record so we click and now to create a new animation it's really easy you can simply click here on the add camera keyframe and then with the arrow keys on the keyboard or WASD you can simply move the camera so I'm going to move the camera forward and I'm just going to adjust the position a little bit by pressing the mouse right button and while holding it I'm just going to position better like this and I'm going to press again the add camera keyframe button. Now I can preview the animation by pressing here play and so we have a nice animation but I want this animation to have 12 seconds so to increase the animation time it's very easy you'll just go here to the bottom and you see this 4 seconds I can either click here and type the exact number or I can press this uh, button, this plus button and make it 12 seconds. So now you'll see that animation is going a little bit uh, slower so and it's the, the exact timing that I want. So when I'm done I'm just going to press here save uh, clip changes so okay. So now we are ready to start animating some elements and the first thing we need to do is to add render effects. And we can start with one of the presets from Lumion library. So we'll go here to custom style and just going to select here this realistic one. Now the first thing we need to animate it's the sky with the clouds and the sun as well. And we need to do this by doing keyframes animation. And with the keyframes animation you will see that each effect that you click, if you see here this button, keyframe animation. So it means that this can be animated. But if we go to the real skies effect, which is the one that we have here right now, uh, you see if we move, we see the clouds moving, right? But we don't have anything to animate because this real skies, they are an HDRI, which is basically a 360 image. With this image, we cannot control the amount of clouds if you want more clouds or less clouds. So what we need to do here is to go to the add effect and then under sky and weather, we'll find the sky and clouds. And now it says that it's blocked by another effect, which is the real skies. So we need to disable the effect here and now enable the sky and clouds. So with this sky and clouds, if we click it, you see that each setting, each property, we can animate, we can create keyframes. And as you can see, if I increase here the sliders, you can see that I'm changing the type of clouds, the sky, more clouds, less clouds. I can change the cloud brightness, the direction. So all of these properties I can control here. Okay and with the sky brightness as well so all of this I can control here now so we are going to use the sky and clouds but now we also need a sun so to add the sun we'll go to add effect and then sky and weather again and then lighting and we'll find here the sun effect so now this is much better and to animate this sun you can simply go here to the sun height and just do like this right so perfect animation no, this is wrong because the sun moves in a ellipse shape and uh, what you need to do is to animate the height and the heading as well. So you need to animate this and then this as well. But if you are doing these two properties at the same time, it, it will not be super accurate what you're doing. So what I suggest, instead of using the sun effect, let's go here and remove it. We have another thing in Lumion. If you go to Architectural, probably in older versions of Lumion, this will be in another section, but they do have this effect as well, which is called Sun Study. So we had this Sun Study, and, and here you can set the Sun location to any part of the world. So let's say that I want this Sun to be 
here somewhere in France. Okay, let's just click here. Now press OK. And now here I'll have the hour. So let's say that it's uh, three o'clock. And minutes, it's OK. Day, it's OK. The month, let's put it for example in March. And we are into fall, 2023. But this doesn't matter because it will not change anything. And then you have the north offset as well. But uh, let me just go here and remove here the clouds so you can see this better. The effect. Okay. And now, if we change here the hour, we can see the sun position, where the sun is. We can see by the shadows here. So the sun is moving in the south. So you can see here if I hover, you see that here it's a north and there is a south. And so in the northern hemisphere, the sun is moving in the south. So it starts in the east and goes on the south and sets on the west. And if we want to change this around, now you'll see that it will start on the south and goes around north. So this will depend if you want to change the, the sun position here, you can see. Probably I'll, I'll use something like this for this scene. I think it will have more impact. But the important thing to note here is that you can easily now animate this. Let's say that I want to start at six or seven. Yeah, seven. And I would create here quick keyframe. Then I just move this all the way to 12 and I create here, create keyframe and set it to maybe eight, maybe nine. Okay, so to 9, 9 p.m. Uh, now I don't need to worry about the sun position, it will do everything automatically. So if I play it, you'll see that the sun is starting in the east, goes around in the south area, it's already with uh, all the correct physical properties, so everything is good to go here. So you don't need to worry about animating height and animating uh, the heading, so everything is uh, correct. I'm just going to quickly add here a uh, two-point perspective. Okay better and also going to add another effect here because I want just to focus on this area here okay of the house the, all of this area I don't need so I'm going to go to add effect then tools and image overlay and I'm going to choose here a file so I'm going to select this one 4x5 this is from my Lumen course okay so now I know exactly which area I, I can focus on. And so now we can see exactly which position we want for the sun. So uh, let's go here to the north offset and maybe I want this to be starting like this. Let's see how the sun goes. Can be like this i think like this is fine we have some nice shadows going on now it's time to introduce today's sponsor keychron keychron is a company that specializes in creating sleek and sophisticated mechanical keyboards they were kind enough to send me the keychron q6 mechanical keyboard to try out the Keychron Q6 is a premium, full-size mechanical keyboard constructed of all-metal aluminum, giving it a heavy and high-end feel. It weighs in at almost 2.5 kilos. With a full-size layout, double gasket design and customizable knob, the Q6 offers a top-notch typing experience. I have to say, this keyboard is the best I've ever used. The typing feel is fantastic and equipped with Gateron G Pro Red switches, the sound it produces while typing is minimal and satisfying. Here's a typing sound test for you to hear. This version also comes with a customizable knob, which I'm using to adjust the volume or mute it. On the top right corner, there are also customizable keys and it has RGB lighting with a variety of settings to choose from. In addition to the keyboard, it also includes a palm rest, which for me, it is a must-have. I also have another computer that I frequently use for rendering and video editing, so I got the Keychron K6 wireless keyboard, which is a much more compact 65% keyboard, but still fully customizable. I'll leave links to each product in the description for you to check out. Another important effect that I want to tell you here, we can create some nice variation 
with this time lapse, with this effect, it's the precipitation. And if you had it on the sky and weather, we have this precipitation effect. I'm just going to remove here the extra fog addition, remove any particles I don't want. I just want to, to have this wet floor effect. So maybe something like this here. So it will be like an effect that it just rained, but we will, uh, after this, we will over the time make like the, the, the ground here, it's drying up in the course of the day. So what we can do is we can create here precipitation phase, create new keyframe. And then let's say by the end of the day, it will be more or less here. So we will see that it starts completely wet and then it starts to slowly drying. Okay, so this is a nice touch to, to the render. Okay, now let's go back here and we can start the, the sky and clouds, start adjusting the sky and clouds. And what we're going to do, we can leave this master cloud amount to 0.8, it's a good value. And then the low clouds, actually we can move here to when it's already daytime more or less here and now low clouds we're going to animate the high clouds as well the maybe we'll animate the sky brightness if it's getting too bright the sky and i think that's it let's just see ah and the cloud speed too so cloud speed i'm going to move maybe to the middle here then here we can start to see some of the low clouds and a little bit of the high clouds too uh, you can also change here the cloud preset, so which type of clouds you want. So, I like this one. And so you see that it will start. Well, actually, first you need to add here a keyframe. Let's say that you want the clouds to start showing up here. So we need to go here, for example, for one second and remove the clouds completely. Okay. And so it will start from this one second to two seconds, the clouds will start forming. And for example, I think this is too much. We can st still make it just a little bit. So it starts showing up. And then by the five seconds, we can increase the low clouds, maybe until here, and as well the high clouds. Okay. So we'll have something like this. And actually here, it's a good time to decrease a little bit the sky brightness. Maybe to 0 0.5. Yeah. And then on 0 0.8, we can again increase the sky brightness a little bit and start decreasing here the, this clouds amount. And we can actually make this go slower and when it's the high amount we can make it go faster something like this so let's see how it looks well something happened here I think it's the cloud speed we should keep the cloud speed at the same time yeah, so let's go back here. We can swap between keyframes by clicking on these arrows. So next keyframe, and we see that it's around here, 3.7. So I'm just going to decrease to about three. And let's see if it looks better. Yeah, maybe here we can actually increase a little bit the low clouds and the high clouds too okay and just by the end of it we will decrease the low clouds and increase the high clouds a little bit okay so it will be something like this all right so i think for the Cloud, if, cloud effect it's done but we need to now had one important element to make this believable we have a lot of vegetation and the vegetation moves with the wind so we're going to click here add effect and we have here wind 
So with this wind, I'm going to increase the wind speed to the maximum because I want to have a lot of movement on the lips. So because of the time lapse, so it will be. Right now here, we're not seeing so much because this tree is just a billboard right now. But when it's the final animation rendering, you will see all of this wind movement. Another important element to add to this to make it more believable is to add the fog effect. Especially when we have here this amount of clouds, I think it will be interesting to add more, to, ha to have a higher amount of fog. So what we can do is go to the sky and weather and add a fog effect. And we can adjust when the sun it's more or less here. We can adjust this effect. So I'm just going to increase the density and then the fall off decrease about here. Maybe I'll make it a dark yellowish color, something like this. Green, yeah. So something like this. And uh, I'm going to add a keyframe here on the tool for the density. And then when the for seconds, I'm going to increase just a little bit, not much. And then when it's really all the sky covered, I'm going to add another keyframe and I'm going to make it maybe until here. But very quickly, the fog starts to go away back where it was. So let's see how it looks. So we just have a little bit of fog and then it starts to become more fog and actually here we need to preview it like this. So you see that when we have more clouds it starts to have more fog but then it starts slowly fading away again. Maybe we can leave it for one second that amount of fog. So something like this and, and then it starts to go away. bit slower the effect okay now let's add one effect called layer visibility you probably re if you remember the the beginning it was with some cars and people moving here and they are right now they are hidden so we had an effect here called on the tools and utilities layer visibility and this is great to hide some things and you can animate these things uh, hiding and unhiding them so for example i have here some decals and cars okay so we have the cars good and actually let me show you that uh, okay here you see that I have this car here and two other cars here. And uh, these here are just to move around in the street. And on this one, it will be a little bit more advanced what we're going to do. So let's go back here to movie. And uh, first I want to animate the lights. And so as you can see here, it's dark. So we're going to create here a keyframe and the lights are turned on. Okay, as you can see here, we have the lights on. And I have just all of these lights that I have here on the scene, they are all in uh, one layer called lights. And that's it. So if you have this all in one layer, you can just activate and deactivate the layer and it will turn on and off the lights. And this works great for this type of scenes or even for interiors when you want to show the lights showing up, you can do this this way. And uh, I'm just going to move and let's say that when the sun starts to rise, the lights will Turn off. So new keyframe, turn off. So lights are on and switch off. See, if you focus on this area here, you will see that the lights turn off. Okay, now go all the way and maybe yeah, maybe here when the sun is almost setting, I can create a new keyframe and I'm just going to leave this keyframe right it, uh, as it is. Okay, so it's still with the lights turned off. I'm going to move just a little bit forward and now I'm going to create a new keyframe and the lights turn on. So you see, lights turn on. Okay, nice. 
So as you can see, we already have a pretty decent time-lapse animation. So with all the clouds moving, with the wind, with the lights turning on and off. Uh, here you see the clouds like this dark, because it's just a, a preview. But if you stop the animation here, see, that looks completely different. So just bear in mind that everything that you do here is just a preview. You still need to do a quick render to see how the lighting and all the settings are, are, uh, are looking. So pay attention to that. So next, let's do the person animation. We had one person here walking and uh, what we're going to do is... First, let me just show you. Where is that person here? Okay, so the guy is here, right? I just set it around here to start. And uh, if I go here to the movie mode, if I want to animate, let's say that I want to animate with uh, going here by animation and uh, let's add a move effect. So with this move effect, if I click here to edit, I can select this person here and the first here, the, the first icon means that this is a start position. And if I click here end position, let's say that I I want uh, them to be around here on the car, start the end position. What will happen is that I'll, if I click here preview animation, so I'm playing it, I am now wait, I am now waiting for that person to walk from there until here, it's super slow, and it actually crossed the, the wall, which I don't think anyone can do, so <laughs> we need to do this differently, we cannot use the move effect. So the effect we need to use, it's the advanced move. So with this advanced move, we can click here, edit, and now again let's select that uh, character here, and we can do the keyframe animation. So let's say that we want this person to start walking at 2 seconds, so let's make it here, add keyframes, and since we want him to walk very fast, we're going to make the, the keyframe animation very fast, so at, uh, let's say this here. This, we have this uh, time clips here, so I'm going to move about to here. I'm going to click Add Keyframe. And now, in the next one, like, oops, like this, I'm going to move again until here. Like this. And so this animation will be, see, we see the person here. Actually, on the first one, I even did something different. I just moved till here, and then on the next one, I moved uh, until here, like he's got grabbing something from this card, and then he went to this one, this car. Okay, and on this car, what I'm going to do is actually make it go kind of inside the car, okay, because it will be too fast, it won't be noticeable, and so. It will look something like this. But now we need him to, after this, disappear from there, right? So what we can do is go to edit again and select the character. And now, instead of using the move, we're going to click here, scale. Okay. And when this character is here, I'm going to make a, a keyframe for the scale just by clicking here, add keyframe. And on the next one, I'm going to make it really small to zero. And so this makes the character <laughs> disappear. So save changes and let's see. See? So it's like the guy went really fast to that car, right? Really fast and then went inside this car. So since the animation is, if we play it like this, we will see that something is wrong, but it will be super fast, as you can see, to not be noticeable. So now the next thing we need to do is start animating the cars and we can use the exact same advanced move to animate the cars. And so we need to go here again, edit and click the car and on the first keyframe, so something like this, click add keyframe. I already shared this uh, tip in a short video but I'm going to share it here again and it's a very useful one. It's when you are moving cars, instead of just moving like this with this um, with a left click, you can actually hold F on the keyboard and it will be moving according to the inclination. You see, 
that is making automatically the inclination according to the terrain. So this is very useful. So now in this car, we need to select and we have here select and move. So we are freely, freely moving the car, but we first need to click at keyframe because this is the first position that we want the car. Then we can move to the second one and while holding the F key, because this way, as I said, we will um, be adjusting according to the inclination, we can move here towards the ramp, but we need to start rotating the car as well. So I'm going to click here, rotate, and I'm just going to rotate it slightly, maybe something like this. Okay, and now on the next one, the car will be on the road. I'm going to, again, to the select, and make move it here, and rotate. Okay, and on the next two keyframes, I'm going again to move, and I'm going to move the car out of the way, like this. Okay, now let's see the animation. So the car goes in the car, waits a little bit, and the car goes bye bye. <laughs> so let's see in full speed. See, we, if we check the animation slowly like this, we see that something a little bit wrong here with the turning the car because we cannot see even the, the wheels turning. But since it's a very fast animation, it's not so noticeable, so it's okay. And we need to add some other movement as well, like the, the other cars. So we had here, so this is the first car. Actually, before that first car moving out, I'm going to put this one new keyframe, and then I'm just going to move it like this, out of the way. Something like this. So... Well, wait, actually, this is the first keyframe, and now, when I move it forward, here, this will be the other one. Okay. Now here, more to the front, I'm going to make this van here. Now the next keyframe will be about here. And then, towards the end of the day, I have another car. Of course, now you can add as much as elements as you think it will fit. So it will be up to you. And this one will be a little bit faster, like this. Okay, so let's see how it looks, the cars. We have the first one passing, second one goes away, another, and the last one. Yep, it will be really, really fast. And since we have some movement, you can also go to the add effect and add a motion blur. Maybe just 0 0.5 will be enough. And this way, when the cars are moving, if I go back here, so you will see some slight movement here. And so as you can see, it's quite easy to make this type of animation and you can be really creative with what type of elements you add to your scene. And if you want, you can tag me on my Instagram when you make your own animations. I will be publishing on my stories the best ones. If you are interested in learning more about Lumion and what makes a realistic render, I've got some great news for you. I invite you to join my free training, so make sure to follow the link in the description. Don't forget to give the video a like, and I'll see you in the next one.